Hey everyone, this is Bo from the Mari server. I'm here to do a video on homesteads. That's right, homesteads. Now, there's a lot to cover for this video, so do sit tight. It's going to be fairly long. I'm going to be covering what you can do on your homestead, how to level your homestead, getting homestead stones, and much more. So, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to get a homestead ticket once you get to level 10. Now this homestead ticket is going to allow you to create your own homestead and you get to choose between one out of three different types of environments. The first one is in Yulad, second one is in Physis, and the third one is in Conus. So do keep in mind that once you choose the type of homestead you want, you cannot go back and change it. Here's an example of the Conus homestead. It is like an elf feel to it. It's got the desert look to it like Philia and I really like their buildings it's really nice um, not too many people have this homestead so take a look, good look at it this is the elf one now here's the giant one the giant one has a nice wintry feel to it this is in physics and uh, it's got also like nice little things like uh, uh, what do you call it snow instead of rain and snowman specific ones that other homesteads uh, can't have so each homestead has their own little special thing, so keep that in mind. Last but not least, here is the human homestead. It's kind of got a prairie feel to it. It's just all grassy and everything, and like houses, like really tall houses. <laughs> so that is basically the human uh, homestead. Alright, so the next thing I want to show you guys is things you can have and do on your homestead. You can have things like chickens, so you can gather eggs instead of getting them off the field. So that's pretty nice, your own little egg farmer here. You can also fish, pretty darn awesome. You can gather wool from your sheep and uh, do some little weaving if you wanted to. You can, uh, let's see, you can also gather milk from your cows. Yeah. You can do alchemy stuff so you don't have to go to uh, Taltine just to use the ovens. There's some ovens of your own in your own homestead. You can have your own cooking oven as well so you can cook in your homestead if you wanted to. You can also do blacksmithing. You can do refining. And last but not least, you can do carpentry. Chop those woods, get lots of woods, firewood, all that good stuff. So you literally, if you have two chopping blocks, you can just rotate between the two and then it'll restore over time. And you literally have an unlimited supply of firewood right here. Good stuff. You can also special upgrade your weapons if you have a special upgrade anvil right here. You don't have to find one in a town. You can also like paint. And if you have like two different types of paints, you can mix them up. And you know, kind of really customize the colors you want. Or create your own paint. Now, don't get this mixed up with uh, dyes for your clothes. This paint is specifically only to paint things on your homestead. And not everything on your homestead can be painted. So you kind of have to click um, on the things you want to paint and see if they can be painted or not. So let's see. I'm going to go over here and I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go paint that tent. The tent has like multiple layers on it. So if I go to my uh, tent, as you can see, I just click on it, and then I can choose to, um, oops, let's see, uh, yep, click on it, and I'm going to edit it, and then I'm going to throw my paint in there, and I can choose which part I want to paint. So you can really customize your homestead to your colors if you want to. You can also have an herb farm. Lots and lots of people have this. this. is the main reason why people have homesteads, is to have their own herb farm to make potions. And pretty much, in summary, homesteads are mostly just all for decor, just to decorate with all your event stuff, with all your own like designs you want. You can really just make it all just you. This is your homestead. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get homestead stones. Now the first most obvious way to get homestead stones is to get them from your homestead stone pile right here. You start off with one pile. You can also get an additional pile if you paid pawns for it, but I believe you're maxed at just two. Unfortunately, you can only gather the pile once per day, so I can't gather mine anymore. If that happens, there's other ways you can get homestead stones. 
You can get homestead stones from outlaw hunting. Get an outlaw homestead pass from outlaw hunting, and once you go into the homestead, you can, uh, let's see, you can hopefully... Maybe, hopefully find the outlaw. Yeah, awesome. Got lucky here. So you can, you can not only fight the outlaws and the bandits, but you can also, uh, take their homestead stones. It's only literally just two homestead stones off their pile, but, you know, who knows, you might get a huge lucky. You can also get some seeds from their end chest reward. So that's also a bonus for your homestead. Another way you can get some homestead stones is to do this guy's daily quest. If you go to Port Cobb, you're going to see this guy standing around in the middle of the town and just talk to him and he's going to have a quest for you. Basically, the quest has you giving him uh, five nails and once you complete that quest, he's going to give you two extra homestead stones and an adventure seal, so that's kind of a bonus. If you want some homestead seeds, you can do Glennis' part-time job in Dunbarton. She's basically the grocery store person, so you just go over to her at noon and then she's going to have a quest for you. If you don't like to do Glennis' part-time job, you can also do Sierra Dungeon and that'll also drop some seeds as well. So right now I'm going to hit this tree for some berries for a part-time job, but let's say I don't want to have to hit this tree. Maybe I want to get my berries somewhere else. That's why we have a homestead, guys! You can get a berry shrub and then, you know, I just hit the uh, berry shrub and get some berries. <laughs> so once you complete her quest, do know that it's not going to show, you know, on the list the homestead seeds, but you will get the homestead seeds once you complete your uh, reward. So just choose any reward, you're going to get some homestead seeds. So here I'm getting a random bag of seeds and there it is. Haha! -ha. Now another thing people don't know too much about is that you can add your favorite homesteads to your homestead map. Here you can see that I have some people added, but you know, let's say I want to add some people. How do I do that? First of all, you want to go to their homestead. And at their homestead, you'll be able to see the add favorites in the upper right corner. Here it says delete because I already added this person, so if you actually don't want them on your homestead map anymore, you can delete them. But let me show you guys how to add them first. So by adding them, you pretty much have to go right click on their name in their friends list and then go enter homestead. You can do this on a guild list too, you can right click a person and go to their homestead. There's many ways to enter their homestead. Once you do, click on add favorites and then once that's done, you can uh, go to your map and see if they're there. Once you have them added, you can just click on view homestead map where your homestead icon is. And then there you have it. They're on your homestead map and you can access them whenever you want instead of having to go to your friends list. Ta-da! Quick access. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is the edit and construction mode on the homestead. Now, the construction mode is literally a list of all the things you can build on your homestead. It, you can build lots of decor, production related stuff, many, 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 many things. Um, do know that some of the things that you build require materials and some of them require only pawns. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The edit mode lets you actually edit everything on your homestead. It has this look right here where it shows all the little squares and stuff. You can move things around if you don't like it in a certain spot. It's literally like playing Farmville in a way. So you can really customize it to your preference uh, and design. Also, do keep in mind that there is a building time for items that you build on your homestead. Right here you can see that I have two of my items being uh, built yet, but they're not fully complete, so they're a little bit dark and, like, pulsing. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to put down a flower here, and you're going to be able to witness the building time. And there it is, little bars going up, and that's basically how long it takes to build. It's also consuming the stones that I gathered uh, just to build this item, and it gives me some extra cons. So that is one thing to know, is that when you build things, you get some cons, and cons are basically EXP uh, of your homestead to determine your homestead level. 
Now let's say I want to remove this uh, thing out of one hair, and when you remove it, you get a little seedling back. When you get the seedling back, you can literally sell it to other people, trade it to other people, or you can literally put it back down again if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and put this flower back down, and it's not going to consume any uh, homestead stones because it's already a seed, it's already been made. But it will still require building time. Now do keep in mind that there are better ways to move things around. You don't have to remove them. You can just like go to the edit mode and then click on them and go to move and then there it goes. So I move it over there. If you don't like it over there, I'm going to go click on again and move it over there. So you can really just put things wherever you want as long as there's a free open space and it's not overlapping. For example, see it's red and it's overlapping, so I can't put it there. You can also rotate using page up and down, so voila, I rotated that lamp and I can just move it in the direction I want it to be facing. So things can be the way you want it to be. You can also set things to a specific privacy settings if you don't want people to gather or use certain things on your home set. So just literally, it's restricted to you only if you wanted to. Basically go to right click and view on edit mode and then choose which one you want to check it to whether it's just your friends Whether it's just your guild members or specific people on a list You can also do this on the entrance to your homestead so you can only specifically Set it to people that you want to enter your homestead so you don't get like random creeper stalkers going to your homestead So that's one thing to keep in mind in terms of privacy settings Alright, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys is leveling a homestead. As you can see, the most common way to level a homestead is to grow some crops. You're going to need a farm plot and then basically some seeds. Just pretty much put down some of your seeds and wait for them to grow and then voila, harvest them and you get some cons. Now do keep in mind that you can get some bonus cons by having certain things near your plot, like this wheelbarrow for example, will increase the amount of cons you can get from your crops when you gather them. So there's a lot of many things uh, on your homestead that you can put near certain items to increase the amount of materials you can obtain from it. So do keep that in mind and read the descriptions on your homestead items. Alright, so here are basically the seeds you can get. You can get strawberries, poinsettias, tomatoes, eggplants, cabbage, and pumpkins. You can't really get poinsettias anymore, they're from an event, but you can always get pumpkins and stuff like that. So pumpkins give the most amount of cons and the strawberries give the least, but they don't take as much time to grow compared to pumpkins. But I still say that the pumpkins are a lot more worth the time because I don't think you're going to be standing around your homestead plopping down strawberries all day. If you want to decrease the growth time, you can play music for your crops and hopefully they'll like it. Maybe after hours of playing music they'll finally like it. And then voila, it will be like, yeah, I like your music. Now another great way to level your homestead is using flower pots. Lots of people use these uh, flower pots to level their homestead really quickly because one, they only take up a one by one space, not a lot of space. Two, they don't take up any materials at all except for homestead stones. And three, they don't even take up a lot of homestead stones. Pretty much they only take up like a fragment. So they don't even take up too much materials. Only downside is they take about um, five hours to build. And at the same time, you can only get them when they're at a level 13 homestead. So these things are not really useful until you get to level 13. But there are other things you can use. For example, a scarecrow pretty much does the same thing as a flower pot. It does take up a little bit more space, but you can get them at level 12 at least. Now there's also the food kiosks that help level your homestead quickly as well. Now the food kiosks take a lot more homestead stones than the flower pots, and they take up a lot more space as well, but they don't require materials. The only difference is that the food kiosk takes one whole day to build and they give 2,500 cons compared to the 360 of the flower pot. Regardless, I still say that the flower pots are better because you only need one fragment for the flower pots versus the 30 for the food kiosk. 
and in the end you can pretty much put down 300 flower pots for one food kiosk and that will give you a significantly amount of uh, cons compared to a food kiosk. Now another thing I want to let you guys know is that there are bonus cons you can get from specific things that you can put down on your homestead and they come in three different types. There's one that gives one con per day, one that gives two cons per day, and the one that gives three cons per day. Now the one that gives three cons per day would be the cactus, prairie grass, shrub tree, flower pot, and gift pile. Now this is what makes the flower pot even more awesome for leveling your homestead is that it gives you an extra bonus uh, con per day. There's also the uh, Laundry, Outlaw Disguise, and Outlaw's Booty for the two cons per day bonus. And then for the one cons per day bonus, you've got the Desert Grass, Speedwell, Daffodil, Small Crescentium. Those are only for the one cons per day. Now do keep in mind that there is a maximum amount of daily cons you can get per type. So you need to have a maximum of 10 per type, which means if you have 10 of the 3 cons per day items, it will be a maximum of 30 cons per day. If you have 10 of the 2 cons uh, per day item, you'll have a maximum of 20, and then if you have 10 of the 1 cons per day, you're going to have a maximum of 10. Now, total that, that's going to be a total of 60 cons per day, daily bonus, every time you enter your homestead. Now, I know some of you guys are going to be like, Bobo, I've seen more than 60 cons per day for my bonus. And that is true, because bonuses per day do roll over, so if you don't actually go to your homestead and you're busy doing other things and you come back later and you get like an extra bonus more than 60 cons per day, that's because it's adding up the previous days. And there is a maximum uh, rollover you can use and that's basically up to 30 days or a thousand something cons. So do keep that in mind. Another thing to note is that you can see the gray part right here on my screen where it's for the description is that I've reached my limit for the amount of cons per day I can use off of this item. Now if I kind of like scroll down to a different item instead, like the laundry one, you can see that it's blue and that basically means I can still put down more of this item and get a daily bonus. So that's how you can tell if you're not sure how many um, items you can use uh, left for that extra type. So do keep a lookout for that, alright? Thanks you guys for watching my video on homesteads. I hope it was very helpful and informative. If you guys have any other comments, suggestions, feedbacks, and things you want to mention that I didn't mention in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below and help each other out. And always, stay awesome!